Georgia is here. <laughs> we'll take some questions here too, uh, but the, right, the, guys. the three focused efforts of today, questions coming at him a lot, um, steady state cardio versus hit cardio, um, where you're at, what are your goals, what's some nutrition he's got you set up on, et cetera, et cetera. Genetic freak versus genetic limitations. Where does hard work play in? How does your plan map out? Um, he's so bossy, he wants me to look at this, this camera. camera. Camera but, one, camera two. But camera I'm, one, camera two. Listen, you don't know that one. I, Wayne's World. I know, well, I've, 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 been, off, I've been off a little while. Okay. And then, um, what's our third question? Uh, since you're, uh, I don't know if they heard the first one. First one. First one, steady state versus hit cardio. Um, the importance of where you're at. Um, what's your goal? Are you training to be an athlete? Are you training to get on stage like this monster? Because those cardios are going to vary uh, genetic freak versus genetic limitations. Um, that's where we came up with that question. A lot of people ask that. And then the third one is Mike? Uh, third one is Mona. <laughs> what's See, the third listen, one? <laughs> he, has me, he has me come over here, you know, to, to cover in his weaknesses. Yes. So, Macros? Macros and diet. There we go. That's my bonus here. I mean, he's like the diet king. Uh, I'm currently trying a macro plan, which uh, so I've got some experience. I know his way works. Uh, macros work as well. well. We'll see. I'm almost to the end. I'll give you more results here in a week or so. Okay, so let's go with the first one. Okay. First one, hit cardio versus uh, slow steady state cardio. Tell me, now from what I know, I know you love hit cardio. Tell me about hit cardio for you. Well, I mean, that was my world. So, you know, I, until I met Mike, I lived in a world where everything done, everything that I did was at max effort. And then I'd get a little recovery time and then max effort and recovery time. Um, and he's like, hey, hey, hey buddy, are, are we still playing football or are we still, are we trying to make a masterpiece? I'm like, well, I kind of want to play, but ultimately we were trying to reshape a body that had been beat down by the NFL. Um, how this question came up. Let me kiss him up real quick. Let me Go kiss him it. up. Yep. So, so his, method of training um athletes train at 100 percent, or when they're doing practices it's really the coaches that try to hold them back because the athletes will want to always go at 100 because yeah. 100 is all that is acceptable well that's what in, you gotta play with in health and fitness or in bodybuilding uh, or in powerlifting, in weightlifting world it's not that um and, and that's where the overtraining comes into play it, mm -hmm. it's a much more 70 80 percent most of the time as you work up yeah so i just wanted to catch you guys up to, to the difference um well yeah because in football we really have two speeds we have like a walkthrough practice tempo and then you have game tempo and, and the truth is if you're out there practicing i don't care if it is a a, a non-hitting drill but if you're not practicing at full speed my route timing up for the quarterback's timing everything's got to be done precisely but it's got to be done at max effort otherwise when you hit sunday game day um, you can't potentially or possibly be ready for what that speed's going to offer you. Um, what Mike just said is very important. I hit him up the other day because I was, I was crushing cardio. My diet's on point, macro every single day on point, but I wasn't dropping weight. And so he asked me about, hey, well, I see your intense cardio on your IG stories every day. Why don't you just go for time? Quit trying to beat your former record from the day before. Quit trying to burn 507 calories instead of 504 calories like you did the day before. Back it off go for time and then what happened magically about 36 hours later after I implemented what he told me to do, ah, the weight just starts kind of flowing off me because the stress in the body um, was brought down and I could literally just burn the calories. And so I saw it in the mirror in 36 hours. Um, but again, it started with me asking a question and then what is your body responding to in, in the total stress that's under from maybe caloric deficit compared to are we working to get on stage or a photo shoot or um, what you're actually preparing for is gonna tell you what you need to do. Because I couldn't do steady state cardio every day as a player. I would need to do yes. our, our sprints, which is you know eight seconds max effort, recover for 32. Eight seconds max effort, recover for 32, because that was the world I lived in. So let's try to sum this up for you guys so you understand. If you are an athlete, um, <clears throat> hit cardio, great, great for you. If you are trying to create a physique, an art piece, then slow, to, slow, steady cardio is better for you. And there's a couple different reasons why. One is this. Uh, when you're trying to get ready for a show, your body will, and it's a beautiful thing, it will protect itself. Um, so when it comes to slow, steady cardio, if you're doing 30 minutes and your body starts to protect itself, you can move up to 40 minutes. Protects itself again, you can go up to 50 minutes. Mm. As you're playing with your calories and you know where everything is, 
Um, and the biggest thing about that is that you've got a 12 week span where you need to take it from whatever you look like off season to completely slice and separate it on the stage. Now you don't want to go 100% when you start. You want to take your time and slowly keep going forward because it's a ladder of creating a physique. Now there's two problems here. If you're doing hit cardio, when I want you to give me 100% on the weightlifting, mm. you got one game in you. I'm sorry, I don't care how much of an athlete you are. And that's why there's football games once a week. That's yeah. why um, in, in any sports, there's a break between. And here's the problem most people feel, and I know you're this way, unless you don't sweat, no talking, <laughs> no rest, balls out, crazy, you don't feel like you worked out. And that's true for a workout and being healthy. Creating a physique is something different. You're not going to want to slam your head against the wall every day. Yeah. And you're not going to definitely want to do it two or three times a day with your workout, with your, with your hit cardio. You keep going hard, 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 your body gives out. Yeah. And that's not how we're doing it for the physique world. Now, if you're doing it to be healthy, do it this way. If you're doing it because you just need to get that mindset and that energy and, and get into there and have a good workout, again, you're going to like doing it this way more, so stay with this. So my point of view on HIIT cardio is, again, what are you doing it for? What's the point of HIIT cardio uh, and slow steady state for you as a person, and what is your ultimate goal? Yeah, Diet, diet has everything to do with it, too, because I, I can have times um, when um, I have played around with some what I would call maybe the experimentation mode, you know? Um, I have done his diet almost perfectly for 12 weeks, seen great results, and followed his cardio routine, his ab routine, the diet, the workout structure routine work beautifully. This time I'm going about it from a little different way. I'm trying to do like a six week crazy slice and dice all on macronutrients where, you know, currently I'm on 120 carbs, which Mike will tell you my carbs might be normally around 600. Who, who knows what they're <laughs> at? I love to eat. But I would tell you this. When I have been in that um, you know power building, power bodybuilding lifestyle, working out every day at 4 a.m. with Mike, and my macronutrients are um, normal, guess what? I can still do the hit cardio, work out with him, still sleep well, still eat well, and still get great results and kind of stay that overall athletic lean. So, um, what are your goals? Um, what are you chasing? Um, and, and, if, and if you're ultimately after more of an athletic physique. Um, your hit cardio might be what's absolutely best for you. And sometimes it's nice to knock something out in 10, 12 minutes instead of walking on the treadmill for 50 or sometimes an hour plus a day, depending on what you're yeah. building for. I think that's one of the biggest Four mental hours. thing is, is the slow steady is so annoying to people and the yeah. time consuming. And so that's why a lot of people don't do it. And again, you don't have to do it if you're not getting ready for a bodybuilding show or, or trying to create a certain physique. But don't come back to me and go, hey, Listen, I'm doing everything. I'm dieting. I'm doing hit cardio. I'm fasting. I'm doing all this, but I still got stuff around the waist. Mm. You're hitting yourself too hard to get there. Yeah. And and sometimes you have to back away. Absolutely. Uh, we had a Chino prison. Hello here. We got the live feed going. going. So we got a question. Let's see here. Uh, Lucky Luckman. I'm a gamer, but my shoulder is pain. I don't know what that means. Uh, I'll uh, hello Titan. Uh, let's move on to question number two, Mike, because I'm not really seeing anything of uh, great. Michael Hearn is a legend. No, uh, but whatever. <laughs> now it's quiet. Um, so just to sum up, uh, hit cardio uh, uh, and slow steady. If, if time permits, what your mental state is, yep. and then again, um, for me, I'm a slow steady guy. He loves to hit cardio. If we're uh, if we got all the time in the world, I'm a slow steady, um, but. Both cardio should not be done all year. I, and I, I think Agreed. everybody missed on this. Slow, uh, cardio is a secondary thing. Um, number one is nutrition should always be on point. We'll go on that later. Um, but cardio, for you, everybody out there, you guys ask, hey, I do fasted cardio every morning. You're setting yourself up to lose. So Eventually. we'll talk about that yeah. at another time. But just know that it's a secondary thing. It should not be done all year. Um, now, the second question here is a great one because we just had the combines. And every year, the, the combines the, the, come. Yeah, the NFL combine. Yep. The NFL combines. And I love them uh, because 
we've been in this world for a while, and we've seen guys come and go. Hold tight, one second. We have a lot of foreign watchers here. We've got Paris. We've got people from all over the place. So he's talking about the National Football League Combine, where all the up and coming college players go to basically try out three hundred to, to see, yeah, to see if they're good enough to make it in the NFL or to get drafted. So they run and they jump. They do some strength competitions. Basically, it's like a meat market. They walk them, they parade us around in our underwear for about three days. They're trying to see, hey, what's your physique? What's their shoulder structure? Uh, then you go see doctors and, and they test out your former or your prior injuries to see how well you've recovered. So um, Mike's talking about, we just got to watch these guys on TV. Um, and now we're going to kind of dig into genetic freak um, versus guys that have genetic limitations that, that maybe outwork or outperform or outplan the guys that are the genetic freaks. Yeah, and this came about, <clears throat> I made a phone call to you, because a, a guy this year, uh, about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, 270-something pounds, running a 4'4", 140. And the reason why, and this isn't really going to be about the NFL Combine, it's going to be about limitations and, and people, mostly the average Joe, um, that gets into the fitness world. Now, everybody that's watching here is probably more fitness-based. Um, I know I got my athletes out here, but you guys that are fitness based and would say every day it's the same thing. Can I do this without chemicals? Can I do this? You're really setting yourself up and you're telling me something about your mindset. And mm, I think this is where it comes good. down to mindset. Yep. Where this kid comes in there, and again, we're talking about a guy that's 270 pounds at 21, maybe 22 years old, already at 270, which is a good five pounds bigger than me. And much faster than me um, and it got me to call you to go it's interesting how these guys keep breaking records keep setting things and the majority of society look at this like what was the number one thing they would say most likely don't bite to what the size and the speed yeah of them? yeah um, I think well, I don't well, know. Drugs or genetic freak uh, or, or, or that's how it is. Right, yeah. They, they would explain it away with he has something explain that I don't Explain it accept. away. Yeah. Say that again. They'll explain it away or, or excuse it away. Go further on the explain it away or excuse it away. Well, I think most of the mentality of people is they look at something and the loser in all of us, which listen, there, there's a loser jerk in every single one of us. Now, how we beat that loser down or how we feed that loser depends on our mental reaction to things we see. First time I saw him, I'm like, it wasn't uh, this, blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, I want to train with this guy because he knows something that I don't. I want to get in on this. He's maximized something that I haven't found out how to maximize. And so there wasn't the insecure. There wasn't the excuse maker. There wasn't the, oh, whatever, Mike, I'm going to go do it my way. It was, no, he's got something that I don't have, so I want it. Most people look at the guys like him or a Phil Heath or a Sean Roden or a Reggie Bush or some of these elite athletes that we just saw at the NFL Combine, and they, well, oh, God just made one of him. Or, or he's this, or maybe it was steroids, or maybe it's this. Um, the wide receiver's the, uh, physique. Yeah, I mean, this year. the. I mean, just have you seen that kid? Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, they said he was like one and a half percent body fat. That's not humanly possible. Um, but um, let's say he's three. Yeah. How's he look? I mean, shredded, peeled. <laughs> he could you walk know? on a show today yeah. and walk on this stage. And I got to stop you for a yeah. second because of the fact that I'm talking about 270 for this linebacker. I'm talking about this wide receiver that has a better body than the majority of the IFBB pros. None of them. Now you're gonna freak out on this because you're gonna you're gonna look at them and you're gonna assume one thing. None of these guys train like I train. And what I mean by that is I train purposely to build muscle and size and shape. These guys don't train in any fashion that way they actually train against that right they all so they're, over train they're ending up looking like this not even trying yeah i know that might offend you guys and go wait a minute no they're trying a little bit they're weightlifting their nutrition is not even close to this the way they weight train is for speed and explosion it has nothing nothing to do with muscle size well, they didn't want you to have arms no they, they don't they weight train after. Tell them what you do before you weight train. After we sprint. Conditioning always comes before Who you does the workout. You know? So he crushes people if, if they do cardio before they work out, much less fasted cardio before they work out because he knows what it's doing to the muscle overall. Now think about these college NFL players. You talk about, I don't know, hour, hour and 15. Some crazy colleges, hour 30, hour 45 on the field conditioning, agility drills, plyometrics out in sometimes the southeast Florida heat, humidity, 
Then they get a 10, 12, 15 minute break, and then you go in and work out. So everything opposite of the way you do it to build a thick, dense, hard looking muscle, these athletes are doing the opposite. And yet they're still they're coming genetic out. genetic freaks, right? Some of them they are. And, but, but, but some of these genetic freaks take the work ethic of a Michael Hearn or a Tom Brady or a Drew Brees that weren't genetic freaks, and then they become monsters at their position. Um, the ones that piss so us anybody, off. Anybody 6'3", does that mean just everybody over 5'9", because 5'9 is the average guy, 70 <laughs> kilos. Is everybody over 5'9 genetic freaks? Uh, no. So is there guys in the NFL that are walking around looking great that are not genetic freaks and it's just hard work? Absolutely. Yeah, I was, I, I was one of them. Listen, I was gifted with some natural speed, but I maximized it and became really fast where I was probably the, the fastest 250 pounder in the league. Um, but it was a, a genetic code with a whole bunch of want to, you know? And then you've got the guys like Reggie Bush that kind of live on Doritos and cheeseburgers that walk around peel that could be six days away from stage and have never maximized the diet. Now, Reggie would hit the weights hard, he would sprint hard, train hard, but diet-wise, I mean, if he had had half the Michael Hearn lifestyle diet, Reggie might have rewritten the record books, um, especially with combine performance in the sense of just feeding his body right. So I'm gonna pull this all the way back and say, how does this relate to health and fitness? Limitations, and it's not the limitations of these kids, because these kids have no limitations. We grew up in locker rooms with guys that are our size throughout our whole lives. We've been athletes our whole lives. So we've been around these guys that to us is the norm. And so our circle is maybe um, unfair to most of society because it's we're- skewed. Yeah, it's, it, it's a bit. <laughs> that I don't look at another guy that's 6'3", 260 and, and go, oh, he's a big guy. That's not big to me. Right. Um, Brian Shaw's a big guy. <laughs> Huge. Okay. And we're talking about what? Four, four, 400 four pounds. Right. But that's impressive to me. A guy with 36 inch size is impressive to yeah. me. Um, these kids that are coming out of college look great. And I understand the concept that you may not, is they don't even try to train like us. And they're so strong. Yeah. This quarterback just did a 700 pound squat. A quarterback. So the limitation, how I'm pulling this back to the health and fitness, is your mindset on what you're thinking is possible because of what the circle of people that you're around. Most people that get in health and fitness are guys that were smaller at one time and they want to put on muscle. Um, and so they come from a different demographic than athletics. Uh, and so for me to tell to you guys, I want somebody else to say this, do not stop and do not put limitations on you from the start. And that's what everybody's doing is comparing your, your journey to my journey, my journey to his journey, and our journey to Rez's journey. You gotta stop the comparison. When you compare yourself to others, you become vain and bitter. And then, and then I can't help you. Well, you and, also and, set a ceiling. When, yeah. when, I, when I start looking at, you know, oh, so and so, I think you, even though sometimes I can look for motivation, if that person becomes the motivation, I think a ceiling's been set about where you can go. Where it's not, hey, uh, I want to be like Mike, but I want to destroy Mike. So what is Mike doing that I can take, that I can better myself, not to be him, but to surpass him? Mindset in the little difference of, oh, I like what he has, so I'm going to take what he has, and I'm going to maximize it versus like, okay, I just want to be like him. It is a small mindset difference, but one caps me right here, and the other one says, no, no, no I'm just going to take what he's got, but then I'm going to add it over here to what... Phil Heath taught me, and then I'm going to add it to what Tom Brady taught me, and then I'm going to add it to what these, and then my ceiling is 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 un it's 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 unmeasurable. Who was the original? Who original? You were what? talking about that. And the, maybe you guys already know this, man. I hope you guys write in and tell us right now who originally came up with the concept to be able to take from somebody that works, disregard what does not work. Bruce Lee. Add, shut, <laughs> and then add your own. It is Bruce Lee. The man that created no limits. Um, you got a Chinese man that comes to America and becomes the inc most incredible thing and a legend by the time he passes at 32 years old and he'll live forever. But his concept of, of Jeet Kune Do was to take what works in different martial arts and then combine it to himself, get rid of what does not work and then apply what is his own. And that's how power bodybuilding came. Because as a kid, I said, I'm taking from powerlifting, I'm taking from bodybuilding, I want to be an athlete, so take from the martial arts and everything else I'm doing, combine it, 
get rid of what doesn't work, doesn't make sense, doesn't tr doesn't help on the others, and then make it my own. Yeah. And you, you hit it on the button that if you guys take what's working for somebody, instead of shutting it down, um, take something from him, take something from me, take something from the next guy, whatever works for you, um, or try it. And what we talked about here too is, is, is what he's doing for his cardio. My recommendation to everybody is, is don't just do what I do. Try what I do, mm. do the nutrition like I do, do what he does. Unless you test everything you don't know, but don't put limitations on yourselves, guys. Absolutely. And that's how I just want to circle all the way around that you're not going to find these guys, the one percenters, they don't put limitations on themselves. And they actually think so beautifully to me. And then they always say it's the small percent that seem crazy um, to the masses because the masses are always safe. Yeah. Well, let me, let me wrap this up with two points. A, most of the time the genetic freaks don't act like genetic freaks. The genetic freaks that act like genetic freaks really end up going nowhere. They might make it to the NFL. They might make it to the Olympia stage. They might make it to Major League Baseball. But they're never going to maximize per their potential. This genetic freak, even though I've told him and most people that come in contact with him, his mindset is never that of the genetic freak. It's of that, oh, no, I'm less than. Oh, no, someone's going to catch me. Oh, no, someone's going to take food off my table. Oh, no, someone's getting better at me. Oh, no, someone found out a secret that I don't know. Uh, he calls it the white belt mentality. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's really it's a champion's mentality. So take that. Also think about this. If you're your parents out there, if, even if you want your kid to, to be in the fitness, the bodybuilding space, get them in athletics. Think about Phil Heath's background. He was a basketball player. You're not going to convince me for one second that all of that – running and jumping and explosive motion and burst that he did all the way through college didn't prep and really change and restructure his physical DNA to be able to explode into the athlete we now know him to be on the bodybuilding stage. Um, hey, hey, wait, it's a good point. Don't run over that. Yeah. Because of the fact that is, is, uh, is Phil Heath a genetic freak for bodybuilding? Maybe. Yeah. But how tall is he? 5'9". And he played what? Basketball. Oh, wait, I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the man's overcome a lot in a lot of ways. Um, That's a champion. Absolutely. You know, um, but the, the thing that, that we've come to, even the, the Sean Rodens, the Arnold Schwarzeneggers, all of them, there's a mentality. And, and Mike has preached it from day one since I met him. Obviously, that's why we're so like-minded because, listen, I was an overcomer survivor. He's an overcomer survivor. You're constantly fighting, constantly battling. And then sometimes, guess what? We make up the battle in our head. We create a battle that's not even there to make us great in that given day. Um, so take that ammo um, about the genetic code and run with it. Focus much more on your mindset. Track the champions down. Research their mindset, their thinking, how they prepped for a workout, how they prepped themselves for goals, much more than staring at their physiques because the physique's only going to take you so far. Um, and and that's, just, that's just the truth. Um, I want to ask one question here. Um, and I want you to give it to me in a minute because the answer is very brief. There's absolutely no scientific evidence that it's, that's even remotely healthy for you. Um, fasted cardio um, for bodybuilding? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, so, Daniel Banks, uh, your question was, can you address fasted cardio for bodybuilding? From this man, from a lot of the guys that I know, the guys that I respect that have done all these scientific research, there is not an ounce of scientific evidence that says it's any better than getting up and eating hitting the gym, doing your cardio, eating, and then working out. He would prefer, I would second, eat, bust the weights, then do your cardio, maybe even throw some food in there between your weights and your cardio. Um, Can we step, step even further than Sure, that? go for it. What is, and, and this is addressing your question, but I want you to think outside of something because of the idea of you saying, hey, what's, uh, is fasted cardio good for bodybuilding? Okay. I'm going to send, you're going to bodybuild for a year or two. What are you setting yourself up in the future if you're going to continue to do this fasted card? Because when they start that, they, they're in it. Yeah. And they're in it for a while. So we do know, and the research does prove, that you want your biggest meals before and after you weight lift. Yeah. Okay, so I have a huge breakfast. I go weight lift. Now I burn off my glycogen during the workout. So when I get on cardio... There's your, There's your fasted cardio. Yep. Then I get my cardio in, boom, I'm done. I have another huge meal. So now let's say 
it's six in the morning, seven in the morning, I've had 2,000 calories, I can spread the rest of the calories out moderately through the day, the body will burn those off. Now what these guys are doing is, they're going in there, I'm gonna get up, body's traumatized, because what happens when you sleep? Yeah, healing, everything. Healing, slow. you wake up, your body's hungry, yeah. it wants to have something. No, I'm not gonna feed you, I'm gonna traumatize you, I'm gonna go do cardio. So you're not gonna feed me, you're gonna go traumatize me to try to burn off fat, and then you're gonna feed me. And now I'm gonna have smaller meals throughout the day, and so my calories are already 2,000 less than it could be, so your metabolism slows down. And this will be a longer process, and you just aged yourself, my friend. Well, and I think there's probably a whole bunch of people that are watching that just said, but I'm not hungry when I wake up, Mike. Oh. All right, this is where Mike made me a believer. Listen, there's a, there's a lot of science that ultimately supports calories in, calories out. Um, caloric deficit would be the, the so-called term for weight loss. It works. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that method right now, counting macros. My current macro is five days a week for a guy that was started at 265 pounds, 120 carbs a day, which is absolutely nuts, 300 grams of protein, 40 fiber, 50 fat, all right? Mike would tell you my proteins would stay normally well over 400. My total calories, I burn 2,700 calories if I don't get out of bed. Um, so I am in such a caloric deficit, so in full transparency, I've done quite a bit of fasted cardio in the last couple weeks because my 1,800 or 2,000 calories, I'm just trying to space them out. But I wake up starving because over the course of the last three years, he's made my body a furnace. Even when I'm eating bad, the way Add that I- one thing to this. Go for it. Before you did the diet, where was your calorie intake? Um, and are you gonna reverse out I, I will. after I, you're done? I am. Uh, no, Lane, he'll definitely reverse you back yep. out. So. Just one thing that you might miss when, when he's talking about this and he's doing fast cardio, he's intelligent enough and he's working with somebody who's intelligent enough to take him into this mode, take him back out and heal the body. Yeah, and, and it is. And people can mess themselves up. Listen, Mike would tell you from a t metabolism st standpoint, me and Mona are genetic freaks. Uh, the way, I mean, he asked us, what was I eating before? I was probably at four or 5,000 calories a day. How much carbs? I mean, I, how many bags of Oreos? I can't count the carbs. Like, I, I, I have a drastic thing, but I work out so hard, and we always lift heavy. There's always going to be at least one heavy lift a day, so our body is just always burning. If you want to burn fat, just start lifting heavy. Be smart. Well, listen, we're not telling you to go out and do crazy weights that you can't lift, but at the end of the yeah, day... lift heavy for the rep range you're doing. Yeah, your, your best fat burner isn't walking on that stair stepper that's going to ruin your glutes. It isn't, it's not even walking on that... that, that um, the incline uh, treadmill. It is literally squat your rear end off, you know? <laughs> Military press your rear end off and then watch the fat that starts dripping off you. But um, I don't even remember this how is, We're already in the last question. Absolutely. The last question is macros uh, versus a planned diet or, or a basic a nutrition plan that is already set. Yeah. Go. Um, well, let me talk about option B. Option B, two years ago, Mike gave me literally. Um, now he'd watch my body, so we would go about two. We are going to insert a before and after at this point. Yeah, and so what what we did was literally every meal, meal one through meal seven, um, was the same every single day until he saw something in my physique, and then he would change the diet. And then sometimes it was ten days, sometimes it was fourteen or fifteen days, but over the course of about twelve weeks, we changed the diet three to four times. And what it was, every single meal at the same time every single day. That's what we mean by a consistent written out kind of baseline diet that you're following versus macros, which I've been doing now the last four and a half weeks is, hey, I have the macros I just shared with you. And then I get to kind of fill in the blanks of, hey, do I want to have to have a piece of cinnamon raisin toast, a Dave's killer bread that's kind of healthy? Uh, or do I want to save all my carbs for a big bowl of oatmeal right after my workout? I've still kind of taken the Michael Hearn approach that he taught me because I know it works for me. I try to have a somewhat big meal before my workout, which isn't big because of my calories are so restricted or my macros are so restricted, but I do save a major carb protein burst right after I get out that workout. So I'm gonna have a cup of oats or at least three fourths of a cup of oats with some raspberries and blueberries right after the workout. And I'm gonna get in six ounces of either a chicken or a cod right after my workout because I know that's what my body thrives off of, which makes me kind of restriction, restricted the rest of the day, which is kind of, pros and cons of what I'm, I'm balancing out for myself. Every athlete is different, every body is different. This is why I'm doing it, because I want to figure out 
what I can share with people, what works, what doesn't work, how I felt, how I responded, um, how was my strength compared to Mike's diet, compared to what Lane Norton has me on, all these different things. I wanted information for myself. Um, I'm gonna kind of bring this around to what's better. Here's the situation. Uh, I love testing myself and I am a project. Um, mm -hmm. And so for me, I can keep track um, better if I have a plan. And that way I can take up the carbs or take down the carbs. I can take up the protein or take down the protein. And I can watch what happens to the body to a T. But that's me and my lifestyle. Um, if I want, and, and then also on top of that, the cardio is the same way. So I'm a set plan diet guy. I also, I don't have enough time or don't want that time. I want to know what I'm eating. It is the fuel that I'm going to be on and just spread it out. So I, I don't want to start going, hey, I don't want to figure out my meals throughout the day. That's why I don't like macros. Also, I am always testing myself. I am always on a nutrition plan and I'm always testing myself over a period of time. It doesn't matter if I'm going up for off season or uh, healing the, the metabolic rate. Because anytime you diet and go in a deficit, you're hurting yourself. If you think it's healthy, it's not. You're going to look beautiful, but you're, you're damaging your inside. Somebody that like, like you in the off season or me in the off season or Mona pretty much all year is a higher calorie intake is longevity. Carbohydrates is longevity. Um, so for me, I like my set plan. That's why I like my 4 a.m. I don't miss it. Uh, get that done. I like my set nutrition plan. Done. Here's the other side of that. I'm not more, I'm not most people. I'm a continuous science project that I want to keep seeing what's working or try different things. Um, and I, I'm not a believer in calories in, calories out. I'm a believer in proteins are different. Carbohydrates are different. Low glycemic compared to high glycemic. Um, fish compared to protein. There's, there's a, such a big amino difference in this. Well, food um, even over supplements. Real food. Yeah, supplements is what it stands for. If you guys know what that means, supplements. supplementing. If the nutrition is not on point, don't do the supplements. Any supplements. Um, but here's the thing. I'm okay with dieting like that, and, and some of the people that I work with are okay with dieting like that. I understand macros and the understanding of it and, and being able to enjoy life. Um, I enjoy life and more in the off-season where I can kind of relax and have extra calories and stuff. But... I see both points work. Um, I worry about people because here's the, here's the biggest problem with me and, and macros uh, compared to a set diet. Most people want the result of the set diet. Mm. I want to look good. I want to get rid of that little belly fat. When they think they eat well, and it's one of the basic things, I go, how's your, how's your eating? How's your nutrition? I'm watching what I eat. <laughs> you're, not, you're not dieting. You're not, you're not right. on a plan now. Okay, so... Just like fasted cardio, just like cardio, when it goes to macros, it gives such um, a window of people doing the basic thing and trying different things, going, well, I'm doing my macros. Yeah. I'm in my macros, and they're not changing. So it's just the understanding that what you're doing, he's at a different level here. He's an elite athlete, and he understands, and he can look in the mirror and go, I know what I'm doing. I can see my macros are working. If it comes down to the end of the week, it will change it, take out the extra little fun stuff, mm -hmm. um, and he'll come in on point. He's a family man. He's got kids, and so he wants to be able to eat with his kids, and so that's where I believe macros is the greatest thing in the world. To enjoy life, um, to be okay with whatever that physique is at that point. Well, they, they um, call it flexible dieting. Flexible reason, dieting. You know? and, and I think it is. But they don't understand it. They think right. they're getting ready for the Mr. Olympia on a macro diet. Yeah, and it's not true. I mean, listen, I can speak from experience, you know, with, with my better half, Lindsay. Um, you know what? Up till about three weeks before she hit the Arnold stage, um, she had a protein brownie every single night. But she knew to get where she wanted to go to achieve that best physique, that flexibility with the macronutrients had to be erased in those last three weeks. So we watched her body drop, drop, harden up, drop, harden up. And then, ah, three weeks out, okay, now it is the white fish, it is the salmon, it is the asparagus. Every nutrient counted. So, yes, there was still a macro pool that she got to pull from every single day, but there was a set diet to achieve the ultimate physique that she got. It wasn't um, she still got to enjoy her little Reese's peanut butter cup before she went to bed. She's got a sweet tooth like I. So I wanted to see, hey, I know what Mike did with my body. So let me hit up Lane Norton and see what this whole macronutrient aspect can do for me. And then also, 
Heath, can you discipline yourself to have a half a brownie? Great Heath, word. can you discipline yourself um, to go to Minchie's with Lindsay and have mm -hmm. six ounces instead of 16 ounces in Butterfinger? Mm -hmm. Because that's, it was a new fight for when me. When you're turned on, yeah. and when I mean when you're turned on and focused, because yep. you messaged me the other day, we were always in a jokey mood, and the other day uh, you said something to me and I wrote back, mood. Yeah. <laughs> And it's because you're so focused right now that there was no more joking now. Now I'm in it. Yeah. I want to be something. I worry that when I talk to people and I give them a window, they open the whole door. Yeah. And that's the problem. If I that's, say, what, that's what your experience has been with me. You know what I mean? He gives me a cheat day or a cheat meal. <laughs> I'll make that meal three hours. I'll go sit at Cheesecake and have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He's like, he the you're a moron. That's not what I meant. Um, and and I, I do think that is human nature for most people. But again, him and I are always going to preach. Every body is, is different. Now, I do believe our body will do whatever we tell it to do. His way worked. Um, I, I gave Lane six weeks. That's not even fair from where I was coming from. Mike had known me for uh, about a year at that point. He had seen me. He had studied me. He knew how bad my eating habits were. Um, and, and so, um, but both these ways work. I'll know because of my detailed efforts and note taking how I slept, how I felt, how I recovered. I can already tell you um, oh, on, so on, on, on his on his program, I I lost probably five, seven, eight percent of upper body strength. But a, I crushed birthday squats two or three weeks out from being dried out with you. It was a week out, and and you did uh, forty. There's a huge there's a huge difference when I when I say this. There's a difference between being any body weight like 200 and being a dried out 200. So he was a dried out two in, in, in the low 240s and it was a week and a half out from your shoot and you did over 500 on the squat. Uh, that, I know that may seem like well, 500 on squat. Trust me, the form he did and being as dry as he did, there's not one IFBB pro and you guys can write him right now and go, no, Michael Hearn said that you couldn't do this. There's not one IFBB pro that would attempt even attempt a 500 pound squat a week out from the Olympia. Not one. So Michael Horn said this. And the guy did it and did it easily and felt great. And so the, the, both work, yeah, macros. Those are the things. But, yeah. but, but this time around, like, you know, we, we just got done squatting a little bit ago. Um, the fatigue rate um, is, is very different with these limited caloric uh, macros where, you know, yeah, I was, the, the 500 pound squat was. I'm always like, it's been on my back once, I'll, I'll do it again. The birthday squats hitting 41 or 42 reps. Uh, I'm, just reading, I'm just reading yeah. light ups. The right only here. reason I racked it was because you know my, my calories or my carbs were so low. I remember I got a little dizzy and so I racked yeah. it, but I had more in the tank with that. And so I know for a fact that the, the strength gains were less affected on the set dieting versus the macro. Um, but, but I have a feeling, um, you know, we'll see here in a week the end result picture to picture. And that's ultimately, and, and, and that's not I'm excited. Him I'm excited to see that. Because he's built my shoulders up, he's built my legs up more, you know, he's built rear delts. I didn't have any rear delts. My arms have grown slightly, and so there's gonna be some, some different things um, that we've put together in the last couple of years that we'll reap the benefits of. And, but um, we'll be able to tell the difference. Absolutely. I, I, gotta, I gotta stop you for one second, yep. because th there was something I wanted to say. If you read this question right Let's there. See. From Jack Ron, discipline, doing what needs to be done even though you don't want to do it. You okay, know? so the, the question again for these guys, so they can hear you. Oh, gotcha. Um, here's oh. discipline, doing, it was, really was, it was more of a statement. Yeah. Uh, Jack Braun says discipline, doing what needs to be done even though you don't want to do it. Okay, so for my take, and I want to finish this off for, from me, and then I'll let you say it, is that when you start talking about, uh, well, I want to do hit cardio because I don't have time. Great. It's going to be good for you. I want to do macros because I want to be able to enjoy myself um, and do stuff. Great. Do it. You'll stay with those things longer than doing a discipline like how I do it. Now, the side of that is this. You get what you're going to put in. So, Always. in my opinion, if, if you're good with that and you're going, hey, I want to make the workout structure around my life, great. I make my life structured around my workouts. That's the difference, um, the way I do it compared to how he's doing it right now. Um, so, that's, that's for me. Both work. Both do your thing. One will take you to the, 
top for your physique. The other one will make you happier in life. And this really just comes down to whatever is happier um, mentally, you're gonna stay with it. We got a good one here? I do. So okay. let, me, let me read this to you, because I already know this is coming from- you newbies. This is a live feed here, and they're just asking yeah, questions. This is coming from Daniel Banks, all right? Now listen to the detail of his question, because I already know where Mike's gonna go. Uh, this gentleman is doing his fit plan, but he's not seeing fat loss. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, Daniel, um, it's because you're not following his diet plan that he also put on the fit plan app. So, hey, I have a diet question. I'm currently 235 pounds and have been meal prepping for the past six months, eating 250 grams of protein, not enough, 100 grams of carbs, absolutely crazy. That's just, I'm surprised you're not dead. Um, and then, um, yeah, 100 grams, sorry, 40 grams of fat, surprised you're not dead again for six months, 1,400 calories a day. What are you, my daughter, Daniel? Sorry, buddy, I'm loving you. This is tough love, um, but I'm not seeing fat loss. Yeah, because your body is saying, hey, moron, give me food. Let's talk about All right. this. Um, this. Daniel, great. hey, listen, buddy, I love you, and I'm, I'm joking, um, but this is 90% the, of the, the misconceptions mentality. out there. That's the mentality I'm talking about. Yeah. When, when you guys, and, and, and you know this, kiddo, you, I'm glad you asked the question, but you already know the answer to this. Listen, your nutrition plan changes every two to three weeks if your body's moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So that way you stay ahead of it. Um, obviously what you're doing is an amazing job of starving your body and saying that your body's gonna lose. When you're not taking in consideration, your body's actually created to keep you alive. Is that an amazing thing to say? I didn't know this. What do you mean it's made to keep you alive? Your body will protect itself. Always. Always. Wait a minute. Did you not? Does nobody know this? If you starve it, it will eat muscle because that's what the body needs. It needs protein. So it will eat your muscle, store your fat. So the basically, the easiest way to understand this is, is the old walk through the desert. So what will happen when you walk through the desert? Your body will protect itself. It will try to cool itself. It will start to eat the muscle to keep you alive longer. This is what this man's doing. This man's doing basically the female diet. Sorry, um, but he's thinking that by lowering everything to a starving position where, let's see, 100 grams of carbohydrates, so your brain functions off of 50 grams a day. So you've got 50 grams of carbohydrates for your body to function. Mm. What do you think is gonna happen? And now here's the next thing. You did it for six months. Why not after two weeks go, hey, it's not changing, let's change this. Well, here's the thing, people might say, two weeks, you can't say anything in two weeks. If I showed you a picture of me two weeks ago to now, you'd be like, holy crap. And, and it has been um, much closer to caloric deficit and starvation mode than what Mike would have me on, but it's still a safe, healthy amount of calories. And guess what, my protein was still at, at 300 grams of protein a day, sometimes 310, 315, because I always like to push the envelope there. Um, back to Daniel. Back question. to Daniel. Daniel, the first thing you need to do is understand that your metabolism is completely shut off. Your body is plateaued, yeah. and it is protecting itself. Um, the second thing is, do you know the most perfect diet? Let's say you have the most perfect diet. How long does that work for? I mean, depending on the athlete, probably no longer than six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. You got to change two it up. to three weeks. Yeah. And nice. your body will plateau and start protecting itself. That means you've got to change it again. You got to change either the workload or, or, or what you're doing or the nutrition. So, and this is what I'm scared about. When somebody comes to me and says, I've been doing, I've been eating clean for six weeks, six months. Yeah. What do you mean? Right. What do you, you guys, it changes. And with nutrition must change. He has changed his nutrition, even though he's on a macro diet, it keeps changing yep. as he's going through the process. So Daniel, Daniel let, me, let me just answer the question for you. I, this is what I want you to do. Mike's taught me, I don't know everything he knows, but I know this, because for six months you've been meal prepping. You're eating 250 grams of protein a day, yet you're 235 pounds. Up that protein, what? Three, I go three, to three, 50? Here's the thing, I would just take it up 50 yep. slowly. All right, your, your carbs, you're at 100. I know he might go slower than me, but just add in two bowls of oats over the next two weeks and, and, and watch what's, carbs. what's gonna happen to your physique. And then keep raising those carbs. Don't go to the donut shop like I do, but keep pushing in those clean carbs. His you're doing this, Daniel, right? Yeah, you're doing that power shed, shed program. Buddy, I promise you the plan works. It's, it's the nutrition that's failing you. So now you know, go fix it. And those Daniel, fat also, grams. Real, real quick, real quick. Daniel, you also know that the Titan crew 
Um, each week we meet, we talk about nutrition plan, and everybody that's really on the plan is free. So you should be in the Titan crew on Tuesdays talking to me about the yeah. nutrition plan. So I don't know why you're here. I mean, I'm glad you're here. Glad you I'm are. glad you're here. 100%. I'm glad you're on the plan. But kid, I'm going to pull you back for a bit because we are hurting your body. Yeah. Instead of helping your body. So um, you're going to get fed. Not, yeah. not, now you get to smile. You get to, you yeah. get to cheer up. So. To cheer up. You will drop. Uh, uh, pull off the cardio if you're doing cardio. I didn't see any cardio on there. No, he didn't talk about cardio. He just talked about doing, he's done a couple of your fit plans back okay. to back to back um, and just said that he's now on the power shred. Dude, your, your, your problem is nutrition. It's not the fact that you're not eating healthy. You're eating healthy. You're just not eating enough. You're starving your body. Yeah, so yeah. feed that body at 235. Now, now watch this. You're going to feed that body, and you might not budge from 235, but you are going to look a ton different, yeah. and you're going to get a lot stronger. And guess what? You might be feeding more, and you might go from 235 to, to 230 He'll to 228 dropping, to 226, yeah. and you'll be like, thank you, Mike O'Hearn. So, <laughs> uh, also, line. get your butt over to the Titan crew. Yeah. That way we talk about this further. And remember, if you got my fit plan, it is 100% free. I spend my time, free time talking to you guys. Yeah. Um, I love that. But yeah, exactly like you said, 300 protein, do the carbohydrates to 200 for right now, and uh, take those fats up a little bit, but don't, don't purposely take them up. They'll come up with uh, the protein and the carbohydrates you're taking in. All right, we gave you three awesome questions, a couple of filler questions a day. Take it and run Is with it. Is that how Germans do it? Yeah. yeah. Ab above all, check your mindset. Um, listen, he has coaches, I have coaches. I'm constantly asking for help, not just in the fitness space, but in the leadership space. How do I start another business at age 40? All these different things get you a coach. He's a great one for your, your fitness, uh, for your diet, to learn how to get freaking strong no matter what age you are. Um, yeah, ask reach questions. out to us, reach out to us. Yeah. we got some great coaches. Ask, uh, ask questions and, and, and stay humble. You'll get your answers and you'll get your results. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Res, will you shut that? Hey, boys. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the questions. Um, and again, back to my boy, Daniel. I'll see you in the Titan crew on Tuesday.